I don't know if I want it up here. Don't want it up here? No, I want it down here. <sighs> so much work. Let me scoot it back. It's gonna fall. Ah! It didn't fall, but that fell. Hey, y'all. So, um, I am about to go live with um, Omar Tyree. Do my live interview. My husband, real life in the background, cutting his hair. Like, I told him I could hear that. Curry, what you doing? You cutting your hair still? He is cutting his hair. So, I'm about to go. Hey, I'm about to go live with Omar Tyree. Um, satellite. I'm confused. I don't know what we're talking about. Thank you. Look, now when I come to London, I'm going to have somebody to talk to. There's somebody in London watching us. Me. Is that international? Huh? Okay. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so he's here. Let me uh join him in live. Do, 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 do. Oh, you heard me when I asked was it international? <laughs> Hold on, y'all. Well, he's here. Let me do it. Yeah. Hold on. It won't let me. Oh, there you go. Okay. Braids everywhere. Uh, I figured out how to do this. Look at you. You sideways. Now I got to turn up the volume. Pump up the volume. You got to talk loud. I'm deaf. Can you hear me? Huh? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. You turn sideways too. Okay. So Hold up. Sideways. I'm supposed to turn it the other way. Yeah. Like this here. Yeah. There like you go. Now. <laughs> All right. Is that better? Yep. Can you hear me? I still can't hear you. I gotta move closer. Then. Let me see here. Uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, can you hear me let now? Let me see. How I try this out. All uh, right. I still can't can you hear, hear you though. Okay. We're gonna hang up and call back. How come I can't hear you? Hold on. Let me can see. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, I can hear you now. Thank oh, you. Great. You can hear me now. Good. Hey, now you got this together. Uh, you don't have to work Can, can I read what your comments are on the bottom or something? Cause I, I can yeah, barely you... hear you. Uh-oh. Hold on. Let me see if my phone turned all the way up. Am I low volume, too? Am I yelling? <laughs> I'm yelling? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't understand why I can't hear you though. Let's hang up and do it again. You're coming down out of the bottom down here. Hold on. I wonder if I should get my headphones on. Let me go get my headphones on. Okay. Oh, hey, everybody that's here now. Hey, y'all. Hey, Miss Vernon. You yelling, bro? Miss Vernon said you're yelling, bro. We can hear you. So, for those of y'all who just now joining us, uh, I'm going to be interviewing Omar Tari, uh, the guy who wrote Fly Girl, For the Love of Money, and Boss Lady. <laughs> oh, let me hear you now. Can you hear me now? Oh, my goodness. That's much better. <laughs> uh, Good. So, I'm where am I supposed you. to look? I'm supposed to look right at you? Yeah, you can just look at me. It don't matter where you, wherever you want to look. Yeah, because I don't want my eyes to look like I'm not looking. Yes. Oh, I can see you. You look. You. I can see you. I'm uh, so excited to be interviewing you. So, a couple weeks ago, I have like this little book club called a Shady Book Club, yeah. and we read Fly Girl. Meanwhile, yeah. everybody in that group is like, "Yeah, that's what I grew up on. That's what I did." So I was like, "I gotta go find you." I didn't even know you had an Instagram. So I said I had to come find you so I could just ask what all my followers be wanting to know, what I yeah. want to know. Because I said, if I had his number, I'd call him and be like, um, excuse me, sir, where's my movie? I'm waiting for my movie. <laughs> <laughs> so for everybody that's just now getting on my live, this is Omar Tyree, yeah. author of Fly Girl, and so many other books. But we just gone, gone know him for Tracy right now. Tell everybody, um, how did you get into writing? Uh. The story is, um, I'm a Philadelphian, like Will Smith, West Philadelphia, uh -huh. and uh, 
I'm the oldest of the next generation. So my mother was the oldest of uh, eight, uh -huh. and my father was the oldest of four. And that was back in what they call the baby boom era. So right. we had like 15 people in the house, you know, it's like cousins and all that. And I was the youngest. So I was around a lot of adults that was doing a whole lot of grown stuff. Uh -huh. And I was this, this little kid around all that stuff. And so then my family also liked going to the movies. We was a movie family. I was always going to the movies. And so uh, I just picked up storytelling from all the older people I was around all the time. So I just had a patience for it, a knack for it. Then I started doing voices and memorizing stuff. Uh -huh. by, by the time I got to be a teenager, I was doing what I call movie marathons, where you pay for one movie and then you see three and four of them. And, uh -huh. just, you know, jump. and my friends were like, yo, man, I'm not trying to be in the movies all day with you. And so I would like, you know, separate from my friends, go to the movies and come out. Then we go to the parties, we play football, we get in fights. And I was the one that could tell all the stories about everything because, you know, I would memorize everything and all the uh -huh. details. And so when I got to college and they started asking us about our writing skills and they wanted to see, you know, by us writing about our hobbies and friends and sports or whatever. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, yeah, OK, you want me to talk about Phillies? I was in, in uh, Pittsburgh at the time. I went to Pitt. And so I was like, wait a minute, so you want me to write about my friends and family? And I've been doing that. I just wasn't writing it. Right. So then I started writing it, and they were like, yo, dude, you, your, your skills is, like, off the charts. Like, and so then at that point, I was 18. So mm -hmm. at that point, they were like, they had me, they had me do a, a student diary. Most of the times, girls do diary. But I was writing about boy stuff, you know, going chasing girls and, you know, yeah. going to parties and stuff making money, whatever that I was doing. And so all the people were reading my diaries as a freshman in college, and I was still a freshman. Then I passed into the highest level of English, and then I was uh -huh. helping other people with their, with their writing assignments. And so at that point, and I'm 18, so I'm like, they were like, dude, you are gifted at this writing thing. And so I was like, let, let me keep doing it. And so I started thinking about writing books, and at the time, we didn't have no young people writing books. This was in the 80s. Right. So my friends were like, you can't write no damn books. You ain't no white dude. What you talking about? We don't write no, you know, black people weren't writing books like that. And so I said, well, I'm going to be one of the first ones then. And so then I started writing, and then I transferred to Howard, and then I picked up journalism as a degree, and I came right out, put my books together, and started putting them out. By that time, Terry McMillan had come out with uh -huh. her books. And so she kind of opened up the marketplace, and then I walked right on in. I was the youngest. I was like in my early 20s. So that, that's how I went down. I was always a storyteller. Uh, but then I started writing, and then it just went to another level, and I didn't want to waste it. So that's that's how that went down. You definitely didn't waste it, cause Fly Girl. Yeah. I have, so I have a ten year old daughter. Uh, I haven't given her Fly Girl just yet. <laughs> but um, my mom came home one day. They had a book fair at her job, and yeah. I, I probably was like thirteen, and she brought this book home, and I read that book. And from then on, I didn't have all kind of books in my Kindle, kind of all kind of paperback books, just every kind of book you can name. But my favorite books have always been either Fly Girl or The Coldest Winter Ever. I could never, like, turn from those books, like, ever. Like, yeah. at 28, I just now have a new favorite series. And it's by, she's here right now, it's by Tajana Taj Sutton. She wrote th these books, they're called Deja. And it's uh -huh. like, I can't get, it's, it's going to always be Fly Girl. Yeah. Ever, and then Deja. So, like I said, my book club, we just, this was a book we read. And so many people, it's crazy to see how, like, your one book can literally bring every female on my blog. And I got over 56 some K followers. Yes, yeah. girl, that's my book. Yep, me and Tracy, we all go way back. I'm like, y'all know Tracy too? Yes. And you, and you said, you said you're 28? Uh huh. All right, so it's going down, man, because, you know, like, my generation, they 38 and 48 now, so it keeps going down. So uh -huh. we, got, we got to get some 18 year olds now. One of my uh, one of my followers, uh, the girls whose books I'm reading now, she said that you uh, published a book for her cousin. I think his name is Lazriel. Yeah. Yeah, published a book for her. She's, I'm reading the comments while I'm talking to you. Lazriel, okay. Yeah. So my next question is, okay, so out of all your books, to me, just me, I could be wrong. Fly Girl is one of the books that hit. Like, I'm talking about it's still hitting today. How how did how did you find out, like, oh, yeah, that's the book. That's the one. Like, I want to keep that story going. Because there's some years in between, like, uh, Boss Lady and, and, like, Fly Girl. Like, how did you know that was the one? Well, then people kept asking for it. You know, I, I really don't like um, sequels and trilogies. I like original content. 
Right. So, you know, if you read the other two books, you know, they're totally different from the uh -huh. first book. She grew up, then I told her from a different perspective. But I did that on a business level to keep it going while trying right. to get a film deal done. And them right. film deals are very hard, man. We don't get a whole lot of our books made. It's, it's very hard. Uh, a lot of luck involved, a lot of pushing. And so I'm, now I'm doing yeah. that now. You know, I had to write my own screenplay for Fly Girl. Now I, I just started pushing for it again, to, you know, to go ahead and get some new group to take over because Lionsgate, they've had the rights for five years and they didn't do anything. So, you really? know, so it's time for me to, yeah, jump back in the game and uh, push it forward myself now with, with some new dance partners. You know, right. so it's just really difficult. But the only reason I continued the Fly Girl, you know, trilogy is to keep the book active mm -hmm. long enough so I can do a film. But now that time is up. Now I got to get that film popping. Yeah, we are definitely, when I say definitely, I had that book a long time ago. I'm looking for a movie. And I, I went to your page and I was like, y'all, he's going to write a movie. Y'all, he's going to do a movie. It's going to be a It's going to be something, y'all. It's finally coming. Like, I'm excited about it. It is definitely like a childhood book that we grew up on. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. What's next? Oh, Hot Lava Entertainment. Tell me about that. Well, again, when I just talked about um, making Fly go into a film, I got to have my own entity. You right. Know what I mean, so I can't let somebody else do it. You know, I got to take over. So Hot Lava, I've had that going off since 2002 where okay. I was doing music and I mm -hmm. wanted to do films back then. I've been trying to do films for a while, but it, it okay. cost a lot. It cost <laughs> a lot. So I was doing some small stuff. I had a record label with, you know, a bunch of local people in Charlotte and Atlanta. Uh -huh. And then I, I kept breaking away from it because it's so expensive. Right. You know what I mean? So I had hot lava up and going from 2002 to about 2006. Then I shut it down. And then I was trying to write music and do films with other people. And it mm -hmm. just doesn't work that way. So now I brought hot lava back out last year. And now I'm going to push everything forward through hot lava with my own brand because I really can't count on other people. They all got their own stuff that they're True. doing. So you really can't count on them to push your stuff forward. So hot lava is going to be the brand in which I do music and film. And I got uh, uh, a few uh, young musicians I'm going to be working with. So that's mm -hmm. going to pop through, too. Uh, hopefully everything will get started in January. You know, everybody right now is like, wait till the holidays over. I hate that. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm ready to do business right now. But right they still now. Like... Wait. Yeah, they want to wait until January, which means mid-January, because they ain't going to be ready to do nothing right after the daggone New Year. Right. So that kind of pisses me off, but you got to deal with it. Yeah, I, it's definitely out here. Do it on your own. Because yeah. people like to put their self first. When I'm yeah, ready to exactly, do something, definitely. I'm ready to do it now. I don't want to wait till y'all ready on y'all time. So yeah. you got to put the movement behind it. But it's it's so many people, like, even people younger than me, that's, like, willing to, you know, go on and start you a GoFundMe for the movie. Whatever you got to do, I'm trying to donate my money because I want this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. Um, I was telling yeah. my husband, like, I was like, I found Omar Tyree. I'm about to get him to do this, 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 this. I'm going to get an interview with him. And I thought it was going to be so hard. I was like, because it's the Omar Tyree. It's not like my home yeah. from around the corner. It ain't my home, girl. And he was <laughs> like, he, he reads books, but I, he, he don't read them like I do. He said, I read. What you call my books? He called my books uh, black people books. He don't call them nothing else. He said, you be because I'm literally in here like this. And my daughter, she's 10. She has this thing now where she does. She's reading like straight books now, like, and I love it because she's ten, and yeah. you can't really get a ten year old girl to do that. But that's what I'm doing now. So, besides Fly Girl, Leslie is definitely one of my favorite books. Yeah, that's next. I love Leslie. That that's a, yeah. that's a good book. Um, yeah, she she's my favorite character. Leslie. Yeah. Okay, so somebody said, let me go back up. Have you ever tried the YouTube movies? People say that that's what's popping right now. Do a what movie? It's a, it's called YouTube movies. I guess you could go like with YouTube and do no, it. No, I'm not going to waste my time doing that. If I'm going to do a movie, I got to make a living from it. I'm not just doing right. movies just to put it up on YouTube. So is this going to be like something that's going to go to movie theaters or what you going to do? Yeah, it got to be movie theaters. I'm not waiting all this time to do some Netflix stuff. This is event movie. I'm going to travel around the whole country with it, you know. And you, you make it big like that. Right now, the screenplay is three hours, you know, so I got to okay. cut it back to 240. It's never going to be two hours. It's too much content. Right. You know, so it's always going to be more than like two and a half, two forty. You know, right. but right now it's three because I got some cuts that I haven't made yet. I want to talk to, you know, investors first to see what, you know, what they feeling about the three hours. Because, you know, a lot of Quentin Tarantino's movies are long like that. 
mm-hmm. you know. And so when you need, when you got to get it all in there, you got to get it all in there. The color purple was like two hours and thirty eight cent, uh, thirty eight minutes rather. So you know when you got more content and all those Harry Potter joints were like close to three hours, <laughs> you know. So when yeah, you got more content, you you got to get the time to do it. I'm excited. So whenever you get ready, whenever you looking, whenever you need somebody to post something with a bunch of following, I got you. Just inbox me. Let me know yeah. what you need. I'm down. I got so many people in our little book club that's down for whatever we waiting on you. Well, we we I'm probably waiting. gonna have uh, two movies before Fly Girl because that's gonna take more time to develop it. I got right. a movie called Broken Sexy. It's a romantic comedy date okay. film, and I got another music film called Psychedelic. And so okay. both of those films will most likely come out before Fly Girl. Uh, right. But yeah, that's just to get your, you know, your, your feet wet and get people knowing that I'm in the film game. And those are easier to do films, you know. Right. Well, yep. I'm here. I'm trying to watch whatever you put out, listen to whatever you put out, because I'm oh, a yeah. fan. Yeah, I got to do all the PR that. stuff. And then yeah, I let I, everybody know. I, I let everybody know it's like a step. You know, I got to do this one first, then I'm gonna do this one, then Fly mm-hmm. Girl's coming. You know, because you don't want to jump right into something difficult because then you'll right. be waiting again. So I got to mm-hmm. get something out there so you guys will say, hey, I was pretty good. I like that. I can't wait for Fly Girl, you know. And then you right. work your way up. You make some money off the first one. Then you make more money off the second one. Then the whole industry like, yo, Fly Girl coming. You know yep. what I mean? Look, I got people in the comments talking about, let me call uh, Tyler Parody and Vest. Let me go read this book. Let me go get this book. <laughs> Look, I got all kind of people trying to go get your book right now. Yeah. Well... I know you're going out tonight, so I'm gonna let you go. I know you're going to what you going to go see? Uh, they got a, a new movie called the uh, the Engineer something, some space movie, science fiction thing. I forget the name of it. Oh, and I'm gonna look. Uh, look. I'm gonna see. Yeah, I got. I gotta look myself. I, I just go to the movie to see what's ever new out there. It's two new movies. I'm gonna see two new movies. Mm, that's what old heads do. They just go to the movies nowadays. No, they I've been go going to the movies. Movie. I've been huh? going when I was young. I was going when I was middle aged. I'm going to keep going to the movies. I like going. And I got a big old screen in my house, but it don't matter the, the whole feel of going to the movies. Like when you're talking about watching Netflix by yourself, I'm like, hey, I want to go in the theater where other people are there and you get that uh-huh. feeling. You see people with popcorn. And you, I mean, that's the whole the feel of going to the movies. That's why you call right. it going to the movies. You know, so <laughs> right. when, I, when I hear these kids talking about Netflix, I'm like, dude, I don't want to be sitting in my damn basement watching some, you know what I mean? Like, that ain't, that ain't going to the movies. You know, so I never think about, you know, my stuff as being Netflix films. I want them to be movie movies where you getting dressed up and fancy and getting there loud yeah, together, and whatnot, to the talking to the screen and then coming out, you know, bragging and I can't wait to see it again. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. That's movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. So all that other stuff is just watching something on TV. Okay, I got you. So yeah, I'm, I'm waiting on the Leslie movie, first of all. Yeah. I want that as well. We're waiting on Fly Girl. So everybody that's here, we know. Fly Girl is coming. We yeah. know what took so long, so it's coming. But thank you for doing this interview. I'm definitely going to be stalking your page so I can see what you got going on. Yeah, yeah. Send, send some more people to my page. Omar, I got you. Only one Omar Tyree. I got yeah. you. Thank you so much for doing this interview. Hey, thanks for reading. You're welcome. Enjoy the rest of your night. I sure will, man. Movie time. All right, bye. Later.